So let's look at one of the most important things about your sheet metal environment, which is styles. And really styles is important to all aspects of, of Inventor. It controls your drawing annotations and the line weights and the line colors. And it controls your, well, it used to control your materials, but it, it controls many aspects of, of Inventor. And sheet metal is really no different. So I'm, I've got this model open, I've got the sheet metal tab active, and you can see down here at the side here, there's, there's some different options here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the sheet metal defaults. So what we can see right now is that I'm, I'm working with the default rule, and I'm actually extracting the thickness from the rule. I've got my material here, which is generic, and I've got my unfold rule right now, which is default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back into here, and let's just go into the eye properties for this component. Let's go to physical here, and let's take this from generic, and let's assign, um, let's just go steel mild to this. So I've assigned steel mild, I'm gonna click OK. And if I go back into my sheet metal, notice that the material is now mild steel. So it's, it's honoring that, and notice that I can come in here and actually change it. So it's the same list. So really what this is allowing me to do is set the material that I'm gonna use to, to manufacture this compo component out of. Now, if I don't wanna use the thickness from the rule, I can override that. And I'm gonna come in here and just for now, I'm gonna set this to 0.5. When I click OK, notice that my model updated. So I changed the thickness to 0.5 and updated. One common misconception is that because it's called sheet metal, that it will only work with thin gauge metal. That couldn't be further from the truth. Um, Inventor will actually work with any thickness. You could set it to, to 12 feet thick, or you could set it to um, two meters thick and it will still work with it. So it's just it's just a, a term sheet metal. So let's put this back to what it was. Let's go to kind of thin gauge and we'll change it from there. Now I'm gonna go back into my, my defaults here and I've activated the thickness from rule. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the little pencil here to launch the style editor. So you can see it's gone to the style, st um, style and standard editor. And I could have done the same thing by just going to manage and launching it from there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, I'm going to create a new rule in here. Actually, I'm going to select this one. We'll click new rule, and I'm just going to call this um, thin gauge. So this is the the style that I'm going to use with with thin gauge. And what we'll do is we'll activate it. So the thickness here we're going to set to 0 0.055, which I'm drawing a blank right now. I think it's 16 gauge, but I could be wrong on that. The material here is gonna be mild steel. And the reason why we're doing this is because now anytime that I set this rule, it's gonna automatically set the, the material and the thickness for me. So you might end up, actually end up with multiple sheet metal rules here. So if you do something different at you know, 16 gauge than you do with a quarter inch, then you might have obviously multiple styles there. I'm gonna leave the unfold rule right now as K factor. I mean, we'll come back to that in, in a bit. Um, but you can see here that here's my default miter rip seam cap. We can see the reporting angle is going to be the A side. And then we can see down here at the bottom how we're going to actually manage our punches, which is something I don't have inserted in this model, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm going to go to my bend tab here. And this is where we can set our default relief shape. So I'm actually going to set this to round. And I'm going to go times two. So I'm actually going to make my relief width times two. And the depth here, I'm actually going to make the thickness. So I'm just going to override this and just change this so we can see something in the model. And I'm going to set my minimum remnant here to be the thickness times four. And I'll show you what re minimum remnant does in a moment. And I'm going to set the, the bend radius to be the thickness times two. Now we can always override this on a per feature basis. So what we're doing here is we're actually setting the default. And I'm gonna set my, my bend transition here to a straight line is what I want. Okay, so this is for the bend reliefs um, when I'm doing the bends, and I can also do the same thing on, on the corners. So I'm actually going to do an arc weld in my corners here, and if there happens to be a three corner, what I want is I want a full round in that corner. So you can see I've gone through, I've, I've set that, I've saved those changes, I'm gonna click done, and we can see that's applied when I click OK. What it's done is gone through and updated my model. So we can now see if I zoom in here, I've got the round corner reliefs. Um, we can see that the bend radius has been increased. Um, so some of those things have changed. Now what the minimum remnant is, is you know what it's gonna do at the edge um, if it gets too close. And what it'll do is it'll just simply just chop it off. So if I got to a point where there was a little bit of a, of a flange that was you know less than four times the thickness, it's just gonna cut that off and you're not even gonna see it. So now that we've looked at the styles, let's go look at the unfold rules. 
I'm gonna go back to my sheet metal defaults and what I can see is that there's an unfold rule option. Now looking at this, let's just make this a little bit smaller, what I can see is that there's really three different ways of configuring how Inventor is going to calculate how much correction, shortening or, or in some cases lengthening should happen when it generates the, the flat pattern. So the, the default here, as you can see, is K factor, which is, is a linear value, where you go in there and you actually specify the, the K factor. So maybe I want this to be 4.25 and my spline factor. And it will apply that regardless of the bend radius, the, the angle, or the thickness. So you're just saying, here's my K factor, just, just go with it. The other option, two of three, is we can actually do a custom equation. So you can see in here we can actually set up custom equations based on different bounding conditions. So when it's between zero degrees and a 90 degree bend, this is the custom equation I want to use. When it's between 90 and 165, this is what I want. And then you can see if it's between 165 and 180, then we can see that there's actually no correction is, is what we're using. The last option is what's referred to as a bend table. So I'm gonna set this up as a bend table. I'm gonna add the thickness that I'm currently using here, which is actually 0 0.055. So I've added that. So now what I do is at 0 0.055, what I have here is I have my angles, and over here I have my bend radiuses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click in here, I'm gonna insert a column, because I'm gonna have different bend radiuses. So maybe I have 0 0.05, um, what I'm having here is let's insert one more. So I'm gonna insert, whoops, I'm gonna insert a, another column, and what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have a bend radius of 0.15 or whatever value we want. Down this side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert some rows because we're gonna have an angle of one degree, you know, maybe we have an angle, we have a common of 15 degrees, um, really what you're expecting for your defaults here. And maybe just for now, we'll just put 90 in there. Then what I do is I come in here and I actually set the amount of correction that I want in here. So, you know, maybe with this one, you know, as we get bigger here, we maybe want to have less correction. So you can see how I can go in there and I can I can start changing these values and set these up. And you can actually export this out, um, do some manipulation in, in Excel and, and bring that back in. If I was at another thickness, then I can actually redo this and have different sets of values. So we'll save that. Um, telling me it failed to accept the style. I've obviously got something wrong in there. Um, but that's the process in that I would create these, these tables here um, and basically populate it. So we'll just click done here and we'll click cancel. Let's go and take a look at our flat pattern and we can see that it has applied the um, rounded bend reliefs in there for me. So again, the styles, you know, very important to set it up so that you get the, the flat pattern that you want or the flat pattern that you expect and that you can actually create components that you can manufacture.